Today we are taking this bone stock Yamaha Zuma pre-bug and we're gonna make it fast. And as many of you know on this channel, this specific style Yamaha Zuma is one of the most popular scooters on this channel because it's honestly still one of my favorites. Just like all the other ones we have, we always end up doing a 70cc kit. And that's what time it is today, boys. At the end of the video, this thing will be a complete ripper, doubling the speed. Uh -huh. This is our $500 scooter, our vertical Minarelli engine that we will be pulling out of the scooter. And here's another vertical Minarelli engine that is already stripped down to just cases. So we're gonna slap all our new parts on there, get this engine complete. And here is all the parts we're gonna need in order to do so. And this is $1,500 in parts. Isn't that funny? Three times more than we paid for the scooter to get this thing ripping. This is the whole reason we're getting the scooter, right? So. With a mountain of parts, we have literally everything we need for this engine build from carburetor to exhaust to variator to cylinder. It is time to take this 50cc scooter and get this thing ripping. First thing we're going to do is port these cases. We have to match it to the cylinder. So as you can see, we have the gasket that comes with the cylinder here. And there's a big difference in the size of this port from the cylinder to the cases. So that black Sharpie mark is basically what we're going to be deleting. But one thing to note when doing this is underneath where that black sharpie is is a very very thin part of the case so you need to take jb weld and stuff those little cracks with some aluminum jb weld before you go in here and dremel it away so that way you don't burn a hole through your case and forever have an air leak all right now that we have our cases all port matched for the actual cylinder smoothed out a lot of the transitions into the bottom of the case now it is time to throw it together so we are using the method i use every time and that is dry ice boys so let me grab everything we need and we'll get to work I was cleaning my cases and ended up doing this on the ground, but we went ahead and slapped in our crank bearings, which was super simple. Like I said, I leave them on dry ice and then they literally just fall into the case. This one needed a little bit more effort into it, but it ended up just popping right in, no problem. Now that we got our bearings in there, it's time to get the crank in here. So our crank now on the dry ice and the cooler. Now we're gonna heat up the inner part of the bearing just a tiny bit, cause these bearings do have bearing grease in them already. We don't wanna melt it all out, so up a little bit key way for the flywheel go this way and this thing should just fall right in like that got our dwell pins in and our sealant right there on this side when the metal contracts but the other sides together lined up simple as that boys oh she's happy kind of get them all snug for now and then once it dries we'll come back and actually torque them down oh yeah, oh yeah she's happy in there I like to take a little bit of some oil and we're gonna drop it in there just cause uh, freezing and heating this up does obviously evaporate a lot of the oil that's in those bearings. We're about to be checking the squish on this and getting everything assembled for that as well. So we got all our gaskets we need and everything over here as well as seals. I'm gonna put some uh, Loctite on these studs and get these studs in here and then uh, we'll start stacking everything to figure out this squish. As you can notice, funny enough, we only ended up getting three brand new studs because one of them just didn't show up in the mail. Luckily, I did have one of the old ones off this engine which were saveable, but the other three were damaged. So it worked out. We got all the studs on there and we got our piston clip thrown in the side of our piston as well as our lubed up wrist pin bearings. So we slid that in there. Make sure everything is lubed, obviously on assembly, especially on the first assembly of a motor. You do not want to destroy your brand new setup when you're assembling this motor. So we have everything soaking in two stroke oil. We slid the wrist pin into there and we got our piston clip in on the other side as well. I always like to go back and use my pick to make sure that the piston clip is sit all the way into the groove. That way that thing does not fall out and just ruin this cylinder. We got the cylinder lubed up as well. We don't have any piston rings on right now because we're just me testing the squish. So we slid the cylinder onto there and we're gonna be taking some masking tape and solder and we're gonna be taping down a, a little piece of solder across the top of this piston so that we can smash it into the head and check the squish by measuring the thickness of that solder once it's crushed. So that's exactly what we did. We took the O-ring, slapped it in the head, and assembled the motor as if it was pretty much fully assembled without the piston rings or sealant. And then we took it back apart so then we could pull this piece of solder out and use a micrometer to measure it and hopefully be at 0.7, which we were at 0.75, and that is perfect. But I ended up going with this uh, thin one I had from a stage six cylinder and then a Athena gasket here. So that was the two thicknesses I found to reach the exact 0.75 I wanted here. So now that we got that, we're gonna trim these gaskets up, throw it all in, and uh, seal it all up, boys. Now it is time to finalize everything. So we went through, sealed it all up. We have our piston rings on now. 
base gasket sealed and we put a little bit of sealant on the head too. I like to be extra safe. I like to seal everything because it's a two stroke and if you have an air leak, it's blowing. A pretty familiar setup that we do with these motors, but it's honestly the best I've found for these motors and I'm going to stick to it. I've tried different setups on these pre bug engines a bunch of times, but this is what we always end up going with. We swapped out the white springs, which are soft, for some orange springs that are obviously stiffer and that's exactly what we need for the sport setup that we are doing and we have everything set up now for our clutch. And all that's left now is to assemble our CVT Foley and get it ready so we can just swap this motor right into the bike. And I almost forgot we do have one more thing. We have a brand new carburetor we're gonna slap on as well. So Pelini CP21 onto here, and we also have a brand new stage six air filter to throw on, which end up not even fitting. I don't know how this thing is so small. I don't know what size carb this is for. It didn't fit at all. But in the meantime, we need to take our stock 50cc Zuma and get this thing ready to be motor swapped. Stock exhaust, stock airbox on this thing. It's bone stock. It looks good, but this thing has sat a long time and we have not touched it. So it is time to get to work on this bad boy. We started stripping this thing down to pretty much bare frame at this point because I knew we were going to be having to run a new throttle cable because we're changing the carb. So I just thought it was best if we just went ahead and just got everything out of our way right now, especially this oil tank because this oil tank actually failed on this bike. One day I just came out and there was a huge puddle under the bottom of this bike and basically all the oil came out the bottom of the pump. I don't know what part of the pump it was, but you can tell right here when I open it up that there's green oil coming out. So that's not the typical grease that sits in this case. That is straight up two stroke oil. But we got this thing suspended from the ceiling because it's the easiest way to drop this motor solo when you only have a dog here supervising. Undo the one bolt in the front, undo the shock bolt, and we wheel this thing to the side. Goodbye stock 50cc motor. Hello, brand new built 70cc stage six. Let's go ahead and get the brand new pipe on here as well. We went with the Yusuni C16. Not our typical setup, we usually go with the R, but, but I feel like we need a little bit more on this one. So we went with the C16, and this one's obviously de-restricted, nothing in the header, so we can slap it right on as well as the throttle cable like I talked about. So we fed that from the top to the bottom to get that ran. Sit on a little bit of a higher idle, let it get warm, shut it off. We'll do a couple heat cycles. All right, boys, we've been firing her up. This is actually the third fire up slash heat cycle warm up, if you will. Doing a little temp gauge on it right now, and we're just letting her get warm and cooling down a few times before we actually put a load on it and try test riding it. So. Sounds amazing. I love the look of the C16 rather than the Yusumi R. And now we have our fully built 70cc Zuma sitting nice and pretty. With a beautiful Yusuni C16 sitting out this side and a Pliny CP21 sitting out the other side. There's nothing left to do other than ride this thing now. Alright, so first thing we're going to do right now is do a little break in and kind of just go cruise this thing. We already got it hot like five times, kind of starting to get warm it up, let it cool down. But after we let it cool down again, I'll throw the GoPro on and we'll actually give it a proper first test ride. <laughs> All right, boys, just got back from the first little break-in cruise ride on this thing, if you will. And uh, we got some things to change already. So I already pulled out the plug just to kind of check the plug and get an idea, but we're definitely going to richen it up in the top end, mostly because where this motor is actually going is to a customer, and it's out in Florida. So he's going to be at a 10-foot elevation where I'm at 2,500 feet right now. So you're usually downsizing a jet size every 1,000 feet. You go up because the air is thinner, a.k.a. less air, less fuel. But in this case, we're going the other way, and uh, he's at sea level pretty much. So there's a lot of thick moisture in the air, and we're going to need more fuel to compensate for how much air is going to be going into this motor. So we are going to be up-jetting it. I'm going to find the accuracy here where I live, and then once I get to that, I will up it a couple jet sizes just to be safe. We're doing that right now. I'm also coming in here to check the CVT because right now it just feels like something's going on where the clutch is just like, grabbing it doesn't have a stall right now so i'm going to tighten up these clutch springs and see what's going on here in the clutch plug looks great though everything looks great and this motor feels absolutely amazing it's running really really good so we have been riding this thing all day now we only turned to a full tank of gas i just filled it up again 
and we got it pretty dialed now so like i said i'm kind of tuning this thing for florida so right now it's running a little rich for here but perfect but that's perfect for break-in obviously and perfect for where this motor is going to end up going but this thing is an absolute ripper right now This is my first time running a C16 on a pre-bug build. I ran on a stage six MK2 cylinder like this, but it was on a horizontal Minarelli. This is my first time doing it on a pre-bug, and this pipe is a hitter. That made me realize I'm running this pipe from now on on my pre-bug builds, because I think the Yusuni R is just not enough for this uh, cylinder, so. Temps are perfect, we're sitting at 220 right now, and when we rip on it, we're getting close to three, but it's cool right down. stock oh man no that is sad dude right now we're sitting at a 40 pilot 102 on the main the needle clip was at the top and after the first two braking rides I ended up moving the needle clip down one to give it a little bit more fuel on that crack of the throttle. I think that's what it's going to need when it gets out to Florida as well. So I'm not going to put you guys through the confusing part of me going back and forth and keep on tuning this thing. So I will get back to you guys when I think we get this thing dialed in and we will show you guys the final product. All right, time for another test on this thing. We just hooked up the electric start. It sounds a little crazy. I don't know what's grabbing in there. I'm going to try to figure it out. like his starter's weak it sounds like it's crap either way we're getting this thing really really dialed right now so there we go forgot to bring the flathead this time Slid off the seat in the beginning, dude. This seat's so slick. We're gonna try up gear in this thing, boys. The the dude that sent this motor out, he had an up gear kit with him, and we're gonna try that out. I typically don't like up gear in these, but this is a C16, and it's a little bit more of a top end pipe, so it might not be a bad idea to up gear it. So I think that's what we're gonna do. Well, we decided to go straight into the up gear. So we worked on draining out the gearbox. We want to get all the oil out of the way now and take this nut off the other side because this main axle that the wheel is sitting on is actually going to be pulled out as well. As you can see, here is our new straight cut gears. We're going from stock gears, which is 1352s and upgrading to 1442s. And as you can see, the stock gears have a slight spiral to them. Now with straight gears, you're gonna get an awesome wind. You're also gonna get a little bit more consistent torque because it doesn't have that gradual grab. So we grabbed everything we needed and brought it over to the press, pressed everything out of the gearbox and then also out of the old gears and then redoing everything into the new Melosi gears. Like I said, 1442s, we're going a bit taller. Usually I don't like to do that with the pre-bugs, but this is also a smaller gear change than I've tried in the past. So I think this will actually work perfect for our situation. So we cleaned up everything in there. Luckily I had a brand new gasket sitting on the side, so we didn't have to wait on one of those. So we slapped everything in, threw a new gasket on it, and got this thing ready to go take for its first real rip. I'm gonna go ahead and swap to a Melosi 1500, which is still a medium, but I feel like I have better luck with the Melosi springs than I do these stage six Contras. So we're gonna change that. Yellow Melosi spring in there now, fill it up with gear oil, and we're good to go. Well, you can tell we have straight gears now. You can definitely hear we got straight gears now. I don't know if you can hear it on camera, but straight gears have a very distinct sound to them. It's got a pull. It honestly didn't change too, too much. Um, I feel like whenever I tried to up gear a pre-bug in the past, I went way too high. I went way too tall of gears and it just wasn't, wasn't it. But this one feels pretty damn good still. And dude, this tire is so bold. When you hit the brake, it just starts spinning. Half the time when I'm launching on this thing right now, the back wheel spins. Pretty good, dude. 
This thing's a ripper, bro. Mm -hmm. This thing's a ripper for a free boat. Mm -hmm. C16, man. That 40, it just pulls. Mm -hmm. I got the draggy out on my phone now. Draggy's down there on the motor mount somewhere. But I think what we got right now is gonna be a great tune for this motor. So, as you can tell, it's a little rich in the bottom end. I made it rich a little bit all around because like I said, this motor's going to Florida. So with the up gear, it seemed like it really liked a little bit of lighter rollers now. So I ended up putting three five gram rollers and then three four fives actually, um, since we did the up gear. So, and then we end up moving the needle clip uh, one below the middle. So uh, it's actually a lot of fuel coming in right now quicker. to hold it wide open i couldn't stop i saw that car coming quick too but i think i almost saw 70 miles per hour on there boys i was committed I'm happy to say that we have completely doubled the speed of this scooter from 35 miles per hour to 70 miles per hour. Completely doubled the power of this thing. A 70cc doing 70 miles per hour, you're literally getting a mile per hour per cc out of this thing. That is awesome. Now it is time to get this thing back to stock and get this motor pulled out and shipped to Florida. I really now have learned how much I love this C16. If you know, you watch all the other pre bug builds when we do the Yusuni R's, we're usually looking about 60 miles per hour, minus the up gear as well. But we just got 10 miles per hour more with this pipe and the up gears. And that's it. We're taking out the freshly built 70cc and it's time to send it off to its new home. I'm glad we got this thing thrown in a bike, completely tuned. So now when the package shows up at the homie's house, he can just slap it in his bike, throw a new throttle cable on there, and be able to do what I just did and double the speed of his 50cc scooter. We got everything hooked back up for our 50cc and completely downgraded the bike yet again, but now it's ready to go. All right, that is gonna do it for our Zuma today. We got it back to its bone stock form right here with the stock engine in it back running and we got our 70 kit engine right here pulled out because this is about to get sent off. And that's it, in this video we took a bone stock scooter, fully built the engine and swapped it into the scooter and completely show the difference from 35 miles per hour to 70 miles per hour, completely doubling the speed and it's that easy, boys. If you guys need parts for your scooter, all the parts will be down in the description down below that I used in this video. And you can use that link right there. Save some money when you do order some parts for your scooter. So leave a like down below if you enjoyed this video. And I will see you guys in the next one.